The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. And hello, I'm your host, Darren Hyman. Of course, you're watching the one and only interactive talk show, bringing the Bronx and the rest of the world right to you. First up, it's a new school set to open in the Bronx with a mission to expose students to the global community beyond the borough through the incorporation of technology. Plus, we'll continue our Bronx Can Health segment on BronxNet with a talk on colon cancer and early detection. And after years of meetings, Westchester Square is finally getting their own business improvement district. The president is here to give you more details. And also, it's one of New York's leading energy suppliers, helping companies and customers get the power they need to save every day. And finally, our Bronx Net correspondents are bringing you stories highlighting parks and the Chamber of Commerce's latest networking event. So stay tuned. We encourage you to stay tuned because all this and much more is heading your way. Because right now, we're officially open. And hello, Bronxites. I'm your host, Darren Jaime. Today is Wednesday, March 7th, 2012. You're watching Open, the one and live, one and only, I should say, live and interactive program, bringing the Bronx and New York straight to your TV set. We encourage you to give us a call at 718-960-7241. Or as always, you can send us an email to open at bronxnet.org. We also want to let you know that you can hit us up on our social networking page, Facebook by searching under Open BronxNet Television, and Twitter by following our page at BronxNet TV. And as always, you can always watch us live from your computer on our website at www.bronxnet.org. Well, kicking things off yesterday, a big day in the race for the Republican nomination known as Super Tuesday. 11 states with over 400 delegates at hand had Republicans casting their votes in states that included Georgia and Alaska. Mitt Romney still remains the front runner to win the nomination, with Rick Santorum, Newt Gingrich, and Ron Paul still trailing to win the nomination. 1,144 delegates are needed to win the nomination at the Republican, Nas Republican National Convention in Tampa, Florida. The big question is, will Mitt Romney take the nomination? We want to know what you think on Super Tuesday results, so we encourage you now to email, call us, or tweet us throughout the show, and uh, we'll open up that dialogue right here. Well, back on the home front in the fall when we were first introduced to the Tech International Charter School, it had just received approval to open a school in a community district 10 in the fall of 2010. Tech International will offer students a technology-enhanced, thorough, and internationally focused education. It also will contain a strong emphasis on including immigrant families, English language learners, and special ed students. Co-founder Steve Bergen is here to tell us more, and uh, we thank him for joining us here. And Steve, uh, we said that we wanted to bring you back, and uh, it seems as though you've gone from vision to actual going forward. Yes, indeed, and thank you again for inviting me back, because you're a W-squared person. <laughs> you said to me four months ago, I think this is really interesting. Let's have you back, and I appreciate the fact that you followed up with it. Oh, no problem. It's glad, glad to have you back. Talk to us, where are we right now with this charter school? So basically, we were approved in September to be a school with 88 students. Okay, at that point, we didn't have a building yet. Right? We didn't know where we were going to be located. Mm -hmm. okay, in the middle of September, we found this incredible building in Kingsbridge on Corler Avenue. Right? And this building um, is being built so that the first three or four floors are going to be for the TI Charter School. And it was very, very lucky because, as you might know, the biggest struggle for charter schools, and there's 200 in New York, is to find a location. Mm -hmm. And we found now our own private location. We have a five-year lease with a five-year renewable. Uh, we've made friends with lots of people in the neighborhood, um, and we're real excited, real excited. Talk to us about how TI is actually going to make the difference as far as education amongst students. So kids come to TI Charter from all over CSD 10, from C Community School District 10, or even broader beyond that in the Bronx. 
Um, they come as sixth graders, and we're going to have 132 of them. They're going to be divided up into six homerooms of 22 kids. Each homeroom is going to be working at both skills and what we might call character education. Mm -hmm. And we sort of have equal value on the importance of getting these kids to be smarter, but also getting these kids to be good citizens of the world. And that's what we call TI pride and character education. When you talk about the students, obviously they're going to have a, a, an ability to learn a various uh, set of components as regards to education. Talk to us a little bit about technology. Um, technology is going to be used to help support the skills they need to learn. S technology is not going to be used as icing on the cake. It's going to be used as an essential component. Every child is going to have an e-reader that goes home with the child and stays home with that child. And even though some of the children coming to our school won't have internet access, um, with Kindle technology, if that's what we choose to use, those, those machines can get web access and I can put documents on those machines even if they're in the child's house without internet access. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really exciting. Those e-readers at home will allow the kids to read books, do math problems, access websites, Basically, evenings, weekends, um, summers as well, they'll be able to do more summer reading because they're going to have these e-readers. Mm -hmm. You're looking to unify students around a certain set of core values, and I know that you've got uh, PRIDE as the acronym for these core values. You're looking to bring students under that banner. Talk to us about PRIDE and what that actually means. Yeah, do you remember we played the game four we months ago? We did play the game four months ago, but refresh. Okay, so E stands for E-M. What's the E word? The E word is? E word is empathy. Empathy. There and empathy go. means making sure, these are middle schoolers now, and you know how middle schoolers get involved with bullying and cyberbullying. We want our students at TI Charter to have tremendous empathy for each other and tremendous empathy for people and situations around the world. So the E for empathy is very much connected with the international piece. Mm -hmm. We've identified since I've seen you last two schools in Mexico, two schools in Canada, one school in India that all know about TI Charter as well as you know, even better than you do, and they want to be international partners with us. So these kids are sixth graders, not in the morning. In the morning, they're doing serious work with math and English. But in the afternoon, because we're an eight to five school, in the afternoon, they will be making videos and watching videos from the kids in the Canadian schools, Mexican schools, Indian schools, and they'll be seeing kids with different faces and different names and different cultures and they'll learn that everyone is to be valued. Mm -hmm. They'll be in our school special ed children, they'll be ELL children, there may even be a few Red Sox fans, but they're, <laughs> they're going to learn that everyone is to be valued and there's a polite way to say something negative to a Red Sox fan, right? You don't have to be nasty when you say it. I, I did my homework, got a little cliff notes here, so I understand the D stands for dedication. Absolutely. And dedication means we are in the process of hiring um, 13 teachers, right, from an application list that we have about 150 candidates. And we're hiring 13 people. Right? I am a Boston fan who have the dedication. You're a Red Sox fan? I am a Red Sox fan. Should we terminate the interview now? Uh, I, I hope not. All right, let's continue. Go ahead. You've won way many more champ. <laughs> You've won many more championships than we have. Yes, what are you up to twenty-seven? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. So we're looking for people who have the dedication of Larry Bird playing in 1986. That dedication to work hard. People who come to work at eight in the morning, they leave at five, and they think of their job as their responsibility. Mm -hmm. In fact, we don't even call it jobs on our website. We call it career opportunities because we're looking for adults who are going to change the lives of these 132 sixth graders. So we're looking for tremendous dedication. Let me move to I, integrity. And I thought you had some before you admitted on national television in the Bronx that you're a Red Sox fan. But go ahead, let's go. Integrity. Uh, um, integrity, and we'll say it to the kids, somebody once said it to me, character is what you do when nobody's watching. So these kids will have access to technology. They'll have access to Kindles and even cell phones but they will know the rules from Ms. Scott and from me, which is to say that when you're in front of an adult, you, know, you never take out your cell phone and you start you know, checking your email because mm -hmm. that is basically rude. Right. And when you're in class and a teacher says, open your laptop and go to this website, you don't trick the teacher and go to yankees.com instead or go to espn.com because integrity means doing the right thing and character is what you do when no one's watching. And frequently, with a laptop, nobody's watching. Right. Let me get let me get to R resilience. 
resilience. Resilience means when you get knocked down, you get back up. 86 years the Red Sox got knocked down, they got back <laughs> up, and they finally won in 2004. Adjuer and I got knocked down over and over again. In 2010, everybody said, the two of you are not going to succeed in having a charter school. They said, you don't have enough connections, you don't have enough money. You're, you know, they, they gave us all these reasons, and yet we kept working at it. And finally, on that wonderful day in June of 2013, we got the... We, we got told by SUNY that we had the second best score on the rubric, right, and mm -hmm. that we were the only mom and pop school, the only independent charter school, because all the other charter schools are big chains, right, right. big chains. Pretty soon we're going to have McDonald's charter school and Burger King charter school, but there aren't that many mom and pop independent charter schools, right? So Adjo and I looked at each other on June 13th and we almost cried because we, we got approved. Plan A, plan B, that is the letter P. Yep. If something doesn't work, if you get stuck in a cab, if something, um, if, you, if you try out for a sports team, you don't make it, there's always a plan B in life, right? If um, we have to teach children what I sometimes call plan biology, mm -hmm. right? That if your initial dream, right? Um, my daughter lost her job because the company went bankrupt, right? The law firm went out of business. Right, mm -hmm. right. For a while, she was a little depressed. She found another law firm mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. That was her plan B. It's the best job she's ever had in her life, and it became a good example. And I've had many in my life of crisis becomes opportunity. Right, from something bad that happens, could be plan A doesn't work. You don't get into the college of your choice. You find another college, and it turns out that that college plan B was better than the first one. There might be somebody watching plan A, and the, is to go to a certain school. But now that they've heard about you, they want to enter into plan B. How do they go about getting involved in the charter school? So our website, as you know, is www.ticharter.org. You can leave out the www, but you don't have to. You go to ticharter.org and you click on admissions. Mm -hmm. Right, and admissions gives you the information of when our next open house is. Our next open house, you may not celebrate it, is on Pi Day. Have you ever heard of Pi Day? No, what's Pi Day? Pi Day, Pi is 3.14. Remember that number in right. geometry? Right. Circumference and diameter? Mm -hmm. Right. And every year I bake pies for kids who can memorize the most places of pi. I had a student in first, I had a, I had a student in six and a half year old, uh -huh. right? She won a pie for me. You know how many places she memorized? 121 places of pie. 3.1415962. She memorized, you can go on the web and you can see it, type in Steve Bergen pie video and you will see this little girl, Sharon, who recited 121 places. In fact, she should come on this show. Gotta I can bring back. her on the show. Here we go. Her name is Sharon. You, you, you want the Red Sox. You want to bring kids on the show now. I mean, I'm, I'm working a good big deal here. Darren, listen to me. <laughs> I got you. The next year in second grade, uh -huh. she memorized 400 places of pie. And she recited them. And then I said, Sharon, can you go back? Because her dad printed them out, right? Can you go back to... Um, 100. And then she said, sure, Mr. Bergen. And she goes back to 100 and she recites, she could go fast forward and back. It's unbelievable. She needs to be on this show. Steve Bergen is unbelievable, y'all. And he's been our guest here on Open. Thank you so much for stay, uh, coming with us. Stay here, Steve. We're going to take a quick break. We want you to stay until the break is over. And we're going to pray for Steve because he's in the Bronx rooting for the Red Sox. And we hope all the best for him. We'll be right back with more Open when we return right after this. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.
get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. And welcome back to Open. Darren Jaime here with you. According to the American Cancer Society, colon cancer is the third most common cancer in the United States and the second leading cause of death from cancer. With proper screening and detection of risk factors, it also is the most preventable. Dr. David Greenwald, director of the gastroenterology program and professor of clinical medicine at the Montefiore Center for Colon Health, joins us now to speak more on colon cancer, early detection, and the importance it has on men's health. Dr. Greenwald, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me, Darren. Thank you. As I was uh, sharing with somebody just on the way uh, in earlier, I was talking about men in health and the fact that sometimes men are not as proactive uh, as we need to be in the area of, of, of health. Colorectal cancer, one of the major uh, cancers that really affect men. Talk to people about, first of all, what is colorectal cancer? Oh, thanks for asking, Darren. So colon cancer is a disease of the colon. So the colon is also called the large intestine or the large bowel by some people. Mm -hmm. Colon cancer develops um, slowly over the course of time, usually over many years, and it usually develops from small growths in the intestine called polyps. Little polyps turn into big polyps, and big polyps turn into cancer. And the good news here is that if we interrupt that cycle anywhere along the way before it turns into cancer, we can prevent cancer from occurring. So if we take a little polyp out or we take a big polyp out, but we get it before it's turned into cancer, you never get colon cancer prevention. So actually, you're, you're, you are actually able to prevent. How are men affected in this type <coughs> of cancer, with this type of uh, cancer? So one of the myths about colon cancer is that it's a man's disease. And actually, that turns out not to be true. So colon cancer equally affects men and women. Mm -hmm. um, however, <clears throat> we know that, but we also know that this is a very common cancer. As you were saying, there are about 50,000 people in the United States who die from colorectal cancer every year. This year alone, there'll be about 140,000 new diagnoses of colorectal cancer, and men clearly are about half of that group. Wow. How do you go about finding who has colorectal cancer? There has to be a way to detect. Sure. So again, um, my focus is usually on prevention as mm -hmm. opposed to detection. So our best way of detecting colon cancer is to really prevent it and never allow it to form in the first place. And we prevent it by doing screening mm -hmm. um, as, as um, we are celebrating National Colorectal Cancer Screening and Prevention Month in March right now. So it's a particularly important topic. If you're unfortunate enough to develop colorectal cancer, some people do develop symptoms. They might include a change in bowel habits, a thinning of the stool, persistent abdominal pain that you can't explain, or bleeding that either a doctor or a healthcare professional could see microscopically, or a patient might see bleeding and come to medical attention because of that. Again, the good news here, if colorectal cancer is detected early, it's usually completely treatable and curable, mm -hmm. treatable and beatable. Right. So the key is really just getting ahead of the game and being able to do this. Are people becoming more proactive in this area? Yeah. The good news is that um, the word is out, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, um, this is a preventable disease. And if there's one message to drive home today, it's that this is a preventable disease. So we have a variety of ways of screening for colorectal cancer. But again, the, the focus is really on finding those polyps, removing those polyps, and preventing cancer from occurring. The big word that comes in out of all this is colonoscopy, because people hear the word, sound is, first of all, sounds big, sounds painful. Share with us a little bit about a colonoscopy, because there's some people out there who say, listen, I just don't want to do this because I, I think I know what's associated with it. Give us some more clarity. Yeah, well, it's obviously a scary thing, and I think, I think the biggest thing to overcome is fear and misinformation, okay? So, you know, the, the important message, again, is that having that colonoscopy can save your life. Many men, you were talking to me about men a moment ago, many men are embarrassed um, mm -hmm. to have a colonoscopy, to think about putting a tube somewhere down there, like they don't want to talk about it. But when we talk to patients about getting over their fears and their embarrassments, you know, I talk to them about not, that it's more embarrassing to die of colon cancer, mm -hmm. um, obviously tragic as well. The colonoscopy itself is something that people worry about. Probably the worst part of the colonoscopy is the fear before it, the thought of having doing, doing it and then saying, wait, why am I going to be doing this? And then finally, the preparation for the colonoscopy. So most colonoscopies involve uh, changing a person's diet the day before, usually to a clear liquid diet, 
and it's followed usually in the evening by taking a fairly large volume of liquid. This is not pleasant. Right. It's typically two to four liters of a either salty tasting or flavored liquid. And what it basically does is flushes all the stuff out of your colon. Now that's really important to me as the colonoscopist because then I'm going to be able to see clearly. And if you come to me to screen you for colon cancer and polyps, you want me to be able to see clearly. Right. So we really want people to pay attention to that prep. And most of the preps now are split half the evening before the test and half sometime um, closer to the examination. Mm -hmm. The actual exam turns out not to be that scary. Well, how long is the exam? Good question. So most of the exams last under a half an hour, okay. sometimes considerably shorter than that. Um, we give patients intravenous medication in general in the United States, certainly in the Bronx, to um, give people sedation. They're um, drowsy, not like an operation, but they won't feel anything. Most patients do not remember their colonoscopy and they have no pain and they don't feel it. Mm -hmm. the, colon the colonoscopy exam itself, after the patient is sedated, involves putting a tube that's the size of my little finger that has a light and a camera at the end of it. Um, that goes into the rectum and around the intestine. Again, the patient doesn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. The test takes under a half an hour. If we find polyps during the exam, we remove them. Um, and then most patients go home about a half an hour after the exam is done, and they're able to go back to work the next day. Because people say, oh, my gosh, this is going to be extremely painful. But I want to talk to you about, uh, you have some patient navigators at Montefiore. Uh, talk to us about their responsibility and how they help patients out. Yeah, this is a terrific program. So the patient navigator program and the uh, program for colon health at Einstein and Montefiore is really designed to help people uh, break down barriers that might otherwise prevent them from getting colorectal cancer screening. So what kind of barriers are we talking about? We might be talking about informational barriers, kind of like we're doing today, mm -hmm. getting the proper information out so people understand what's going on. And our navigators have a wealth of information to share with people just to get the right information. Sometimes there are organizational barriers that people have. Um, hard to figure out how to do a colonoscopy. What do I do for child care? How am I going to take the day off from work? How do I get there? Mm -hmm. Just nuts and bolts stuff. They're very good at suggesting ways to make all of that happen. Um, there are cultural barriers to getting colonoscopies and colon cancer screening. Our navigators are very familiar with all of those. And there are financial barriers that we understand and our navigators are well versed again in getting people to understand the challenges and then finding solutions that make it work. Mm -hmm. Then the navigators are a huge support group. So their, their goal basically is to hold your hand through that very scary and fearful colonoscopy experience from the time you contemplate scheduling it to the time you're done and say, how can I help you? How can I help you? So they'll be in touch with you by phone. Can I help you with the prep? Do you understand the prep? If you have questions, please call me. We want you to come and complete your exam. If you miss your exam for some reason, they're going to call you and say, what happened? And not... Uh, and, and their goal then is to reschedule that exam. We want people to complete their screening exams. So now we've got all of this laid out. The question is, now we're in the month of March. There's a lot of awareness going on. What else is happening throughout the course of the month? Uh, March is uh, this month? Right. March Madness? Well, no, not March Madness, but March Colorectal. Colore colorectal Cancer Screen. I mean, March Madness. March is Madness we've, is good, too. We've tried to link with, color <laughs> uh, with March Madness for a long time now. Um, <laughs> And then there's um, spring training, which That's is important, it. too. And that is. we had the whole Red Sox Yankee thing going on there. Yeah, we, he's, he, he's, he's offset. Now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but a very nice guy. Yes. Um, March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Um, so we want people to become aware mm -hmm. of um, screening as a preventative tool. We want people to talk to their health care providers about screening. We want them to talk to their friends and family members about screening. We really want to get the word out. Before we leave, optimum age for colonoscopies. Excellent question. So the American Cancer Society, as you mentioned, um, recommends colorectal cancer screening for average risk people, so that's most people, beginning at age 50 mm -hmm. for both men and women. There are some people who screening is recommended earlier. Um, in those are people who have a family history of colon cancer, a personal history of colon cancer, some people with inflammatory bowel disease, and some experts recommend screening African Americans at an earlier age, either 40 or 45, depending on the expert who is being asked that question. Dr. David Greenwell, thank you so much for coming to share with us. Thank you. Nice thank to you. see you. Thank you. Good to have you. All right, got to take a quick break, but coming up next, the president of the Westchester Square Merchants Association will give us all the info on how the square to transform into a booming business center. You don't want to miss that. We're coming right back right after this. Now, Krista, make sure you stay with her the whole time. She's new to the country. This is her first Mom. day. This Mom. is a brand Mom. new country. Mom. It's a whole different it's culture. Be okay. Now, make sure you stay with her the whole time. I'll be here right okay. after school to pick you up. Okay, Mom. Okay, have fun. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Ignore my mom. She's so annoying. She's totally
ready for your first day in the wicked castle of doom? I mean, like, seriously, it's so boring. I don't know how they could put us through this, like, every single day. How many schools do you have in your village? I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Hey, welcome back to Open. Remember, we are a live and interactive talk show, so we always encourage you to join in on the conversation by calling 718-960-7241. Or as always, you can send us an email to open at bronxnet.org, and if you are lucky, we will open it up right here on the show. Well, after years of hard work that began with a meeting led by Councilman James Vaca, Westchester Square finally has its own business improvement district. In a unanimous vote by the New York City Council, the Westchester Square bid will be the ninth in the Bronx. This move also allows local business owners to transform the neighborhood into an active shopping center. Here now to tell us more on the bid is the president of the Westchester Merchants Association and President Greg Perry. And we uh, welcome you to the show. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. So in many ways, uh, you joined the ranks of other, <laughs> other uh, areas in the Bronx. And, that is correct. Uh, what does this mean for you? Uh, well, it means that it will uh, definitely turn Westchester Square in a, in a more uh, viable um, neighborhood. Okay, mm -hmm. with um, work by working with um, landlords, developers uh, to bring in um, more viable businesses into the area, uh, to increase the overall foot traffic. Uh, we're p placing a heavy emphasis now also on the cultural aspects of uh, of Westchester Square. We have two agencies. One is uh, BCA, uh, Bronx Council of the Arts. And we also have the um, Dep Department of Parks and Recreation, which has a facility that's being renovated, which is called Dolan, o Olin, Owen Do Dolan Center. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's under uh, construction right now or renovation right now uh, for us to have many of those cultural events um, between those two parties. And uh, coming up, I believe it's May 14th, uh, right now we have what is called Fair at the Square. We had about between, uh, between six and 7,000 people that came last year for that event, um, which brings uh, great foot traffic into the area uh, and helps to increase the awareness as well as um, improve the revenue stream of many of our uh, area merchants. Talk to us about the, uh, the benefits of having a business improvement district. What does this actually do for people who flow through the square? Well, um, several things happen. Uh, number one, we, we have uh, an opportunity to have greater security, okay? That could be anything from cameras to lights. And one of the things that people want to always remember is that they want to be in a safe area, okay? And we're, we're making a, a heavy emphasis upon safety, okay? We're making a heavy emphasis of our close relationship with the 45th Precinct. And actually, we have a, an excellent captain. Uh, it's Captain Green. Uh, he, he takes the time to listen. And uh, uh, not only with that, uh, we're, we're going to have um, our, our landlords and developers to, to do more to uh, to bring in 
um, more larger type franchise stores. So it's definitely going to help uh, not only the, the merchants in the area, but also the surrounding communities. We have at least five surrounding communities, Throgs Neck, uh, Morris Park, uh, Waterbury, and so on. When you talk about small businesses, obviously they, they play a particular part in the business improvement district. How do they factor into, into the bid? Well, um, they, they, there's an assessment that, that go, goes about, and um, the the landlords pretty much uh, help pay for for the increase in taxes, but what it, it also helps us to have more viable businesses in, in the area. And see, Westchester Square is the hub in itself, and we are the um, pretty much the hub of the Northeast Bronx, where we the, the, the businesses that's in the area um, need to have what is called an anchor store also. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the problems that we've had in the past was to have um, Woolworth uh, to move out. Uh, we had Foot Locker there for a while, but we're still looking to have what we call the magnet stores or the anchor stores, and that also helps our businesses in the area. We see a lot of pictures that we're showing right now, the six train actually flowing through Westchester Square, right. and so obviously it's a place where uh, a lot of traffic flows through there. Guesstimation as to how much traffic do you see flowing through there? Uh, I believe uh, they told me it's more than 50,000 a day uh, that, that flow through through the area between uh, Westchester High School, oh, I'm sorry, Westchester High School, <laughs> Lehman High School, okay, which is right down the street. We also have the Hutch Metro Center. Mm -hmm. um, that brings in, in a lot of businesses. Uh, we have Montefiore. That's um, they have a medical complex uh, in our area. So there's a great many um, um, people that that come to to the area, not only by train but also by bus. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and many of the of the uh, uh, of the area's merchants uh, benefit by those um, businesses being able to to draw them in and s somewhat uh, li like a magnet. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. this right here. Um, I don't know if, if your cameras can see this. Well, you, if you look at just a little higher. Yeah, just a little, little higher. Uh, yep, there you go. Okay. Um, well, one of the things that we did was to make an effort to have all the things that's going on to the uh, to the Northeast Bronx, and Westchester Square is a is is a very very great neighborhood, and it's going to be even more viable once we have the the revenue streams coming coming in. And at the present time, um, this was a, a calendar that we um, utilized in order to, to market the businesses. And just very quickly, mm -hmm. um, what we did, we, we've had, uh, we had Rebecca, okay, that was uh, a sponsor, Health First. Right. Uh, and then in, in the back of it, we listed all of the 140 stores, okay, in our area. We printed 10,000 of these, uh, which means that... For every individual, there's about three people that's going to be looking at a calendar. So, th so we looked at 30,000 people. And on each one of these, um, um, are some of the stores, uh, one being Metro Optics, um, one, another being uh, some of the restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, they decided to take certain months, okay, in order to, to market their, their, their businesses. And this has become um, what we call top of mind awareness type of advertising. Okay, and what we believe is... Um, what is called appreciation marketing is very important to us. Mm -hmm. um, good service is fine, but what we have to be able to do is let um, our customers know that we value them and we want them to refer us to other people so Westchester Square can again be that very active um, uh, shopping community. You see a lot of traffic that flows through Westchester Square. Any idea of what you'll anticipate now that you guys have become this business improvement district? Well, at the present time, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't give you a number, mm -hmm. but I, I definitely know it's going to increase. Um, um, Simone uh, uh, Real Estate, uh, that's over at the Hutch Metro Center, um, Mr. Kelleher, uh, is working very closely with us. Uh, they're building up over there. Uh, I believe the 911 center is also going to be over there. And it's a lot of development that's going on in the area. So I have no idea how, how, how high the numbers have come. Mm -hmm. But uh, security and safety is, is a primary issue to us uh, that's over there. And we're definitely going to be uh, getting that with the bid. How are people from the Bronx going to be able to tap into the Westchester Business Improvement District? Well, we do have a website um, uh, that is... Um, well, okay. I, think we, I think we do have it. I got it. It's you, you right have at it? the bottom of the screen. Okay. W -W -W, uh, let me see. WSBID.org. That's correct. Okay. That's called a bailout. A bailout. <laughs> 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 they, they can go to the site to learn about more. And what we also have, um, we're fortunate enough to have the Bronx Chamber of Commerce uh, with Lenny Carroll mm -hmm. and John Benizio uh, working with us in order to... Um, get more of the businesses not only in Westchester Square but in the Bronx to become more visible. So mm -hmm. the Westchester Square Merchant Association is very thankful to, to the Bronx Chamber of Commerce also for what they're doing. But, uh, you know, a lot of credit has to go to Jimmy Vaca uh, mm -hmm. because without John Benizio, who's in charge of what we call the steering committee, uh, we would have never had this opportunity uh, along with jo um, 
uh, John Benicio and uh, Jimmy Vaca to, to move to where we are right now. It took us about four years. Yeah, I talked to us about Councilor Vaca because obviously he's very intense in that area and he was definitely an outspoken voice when it comes to that. Uh, what part did he play in all this? Uh, well, he played a major part. Um, as, as I don't know if you, you realize that uh, last week uh, was the final vote and the vote was 48 to no nothing. And I think because of the the passion that he has for, for the area that um, he made an effort to to, 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 to ep for everyone to realize the, the commonality that, that, that it not only is in Westchester Square, but that relates to other communities. Mm -hmm. And uh, he provided funding for us. Uh, and also, we have to give a lot of thanks to, to Robert Walsh, okay? Uh, he provided uh, funding for, for us um, from his agency, which is the, the New York City Department of Small Business Services. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Mr. Walsh had a phenomenal staff that worked with us all the time. So between uh, J Jimmy Vaca, uh, Mr. Walsh, and um, also Deputy uh, Mayor Steel. Uh, they, they came up to Westchester Square, okay, and, and they, they said that, hey, we, we have an opportunity to help you um, meet your vision, okay, and uh, Jimmy Vaca was like the spearhead of all of that. Well, we're going to see, and we'll definitely continue to follow all that goes on in the Westchester Business Improvement District. When you see Councilman Vaca, tell him that he still owes Darren dinner. I'm not going <laughs> to hold it against him. It's all right. No problem. All right, Greg. Well, thank, thank you so for much. having me. I really right. appreciate it, and uh, we look forward to uh, having Mr. Vaca come down and and saying more about the Westchester Square Merchant Association. We'll do that. Thanks a lot, Greg. Thank you. All righty, we encourage you. Thank you. And uh, stay right here because we got more open coming up right after this. You don't want to miss it, so uh, stay right there. Good morning. I'm here to read you your rights. My what? We are all free and equal. Don't discriminate. You have the right to life. You have the right to life. And to live in freedom and safety. You have a right to education. You have a right to your own things. You have the right to social security. You have the right to play. You have the right to democracy. You have the right to asylum. You have the right to take responsibility. And no one and nobody can take these rights and freedoms away from you. Why are you doing this? You have a right to know. Okay, now you ready? Now, just like I showed you. Yeah. Okay. Push in the clutch yeah. and gently yeah. shift it in the first I, gear. I remember. Okay. Okay. That was good. Oh, honey, look this way. Look this way. Oh. Honey, get the gas on the one. Get the gas. Oh. Hey. No, no, no. Why are you put your hands on the wheel? Hey, honey, it's okay. You're doing great. You're driving. Hey, why don't you just pull over right here? That's perfect. Break, 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 break. Thank you, Dad. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. Would you dream of something me? I did? Are you on your way to the mall? I'm lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. He comes on talking about the Red Sox. Still talking about the Red Sox and the New York Yankees. Yes, well, welcome back to Open. Darren Jaime here with you. We want to tell you that Citizens Choice Energy is one of the leading energy suppliers in New York. They aim to bring natural gas and electricity either to your home or business with only the best in customer service. They also educate the public on energy deregulation, 
a program in which the goal is to maintain affordable energy costs and at the same time giving the public the right to choose their own energy supplier. Here now to tell us more is the founder, Ellie Katz, and marketing director, Dwayne Johnson. We welcome you both to the show. And, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for sharing so much. No, uh, and as we talk about this, you talk about energy. A lot of people are tapped into the fact, or plugged in, how about plugged in, to the fact that uh, you don't have many choices when it comes to energy. But that's not true. Right. And this is all about educating the, the, the resident, educating the customer. It used to be you moved into an apartment, you moved into a house, you basically were told, this is the supplier you're going to use for your gas, this is the supplier you're going to use for your electric. You can have an option with your cable and you can probably choose which uh, pizza store you want to order from. Mm -hmm. And then in 1996, they deregulated uh, the energy market here in, in New York and they gave people options and 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 i guess the hopes was to try to save people money mm -hmm. um, when you have options you have competition Cop competition breeds excellence and it also um, gives people the opportunity to try to stand stand up and and save save money for the residents so we're talking about citizens choice energy and so for people who aren't familiar with citizens choice what exactly are uh, how exactly do you describe the company we are what's called an ESCO here in New York. Um, we we uh, buy our energy from companies that are even larger than the utility, from Fortune 500 companies that, that are out there. And uh, we use the same uh, lines that the utility has, and we're the supply portion on their bill. Mm -hmm. um, the, the local utility will still read the meter. The local utility will still service them. If they have a, an emergency, 24 hours, they'll send them one bill. And we're on that bill, um, the Citizens' Choice Energy is where we get, and, and the rate that they're paying. Mm -hmm. So, Dwayne, in addition to people having the opportunity to choose energy, Citizens' right. Choice Energy also does provide uh, employment opportunities for students and people like that. Share a little bit about the fact of what kind of employment opportunities are actually available for somebody who might be out there listening. Right. Well, the good thing about our company is that we consider our company a recession-proof type of um, environment where we provide jobs constantly. Um, we do have offices all throughout New York State and we hire um, young professionals in college, out, out, out of college. Um, we have hourly rate jobs and we do have commission type jobs where people go out and do direct marketing for mm -hmm. our company. So they go out and they have the opportunity to actually sell for you, learn the whole, exactly. learn the whole trade. So obviously a career that actually can, 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 can come out of this. Right. Well, what part of, because there's a lot of fear when you talk about energy and, and, and deregulation, the fact of choosing another energy company outside of what's considered the norm or the major carriers. Right. Most people feel comfortable with their local utility and they'll, they'll pay whatever they're charging. Um, and also over the years, there, there have been different um, problems with, different, with other energy companies, uh, locking into contracts, etc. So we try to make the process as convenient as possible for the resident. Mm -hmm. Choose us. There's no contract. There's, there's no charge monthly. Uh, there's no cancellation fee. So it's free to get in. It's free to get out. If you're ever not satisfied with the price or service that you're getting from Citizens Choice Energy, leave us. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to leave us, and most of our customers don't leave us because we also offer a lot of ancillary benefits. We have a team of people that are constantly looking for other savings for the cust for our citizens choice customers and our and our uh, uh, employees and independent reps savings on pharmaceutical products we give a pharmacy discount card when we get to the door even if you don't sign up with us uh, giving them special rates on med on medical um, uh, pharmaceutical products we have a medical health program that we offer um, it's not it's not health insurance it's it's health care uh, where we discount for our, for our um, our customers and our and our the people that work with us, mm -hmm. um, shopping, dining, grocery certificates. We believe that it's it's one pair of pants when it comes to the money in your house, whether it's the left side where you're buying energy or the right side where you're buying consumer products. And we're here to try to help tighten your belt. When you talk about Citizens Choice, obviously people are becoming more and more familiar. Uh, how's the word spreading out there about about you guys? Well, we do have a, a over 300 direct marketers that are marketing door to door mm -hmm. and selling our company. And so we go out there and we tell people about Simpsons Choice. Also, we do have social network. We have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter account where we spread the word about our company and exactly what we do. We saw a couple of things on the website actually showing about Citizens' Choice. Talk to us a little bit about this because customers do have the ability to save through this. How are customers allowed to save? Because I think sometimes people say, uh, it's not going to be that much money that I'm going to be able to save. I might as well stay where I am. You say what? Well, 
I, I mentioned some of the consumer items that they purchase that they get savings. And as far as on the energy side, um, we use a variable rate. The variable rate uh, mirrors the market. We, we use our buying power with these Fortune 500 companies to try to get the best possible rate, and we pass those on to the uh, consumer. Mm -hmm. In addition, we also offer a lot of different, um, you know, like you know about coupons when you go to the, to, to the supermarket, mm -hmm. you know, buy one, get one free, mm -hmm. or, you know, the, the two orange juices for $3. So we have these, these type of savings as well for our consumer. You want to try us out? Stay with, us, stay with us for four months, and we'll give you the fourth month of electric for free, up to a certain amount of, of money. Um, that we're running a program now, or a promotion, I should say, where, where it was very successful last year, free summer of gas. Stay with us for a certain amount of time, June, July, and August, up to a certain amount, we'll pay, we'll pay that. So if you're not saving between the variable rate, between the pharmaceutical discounts, and between the different promotions we have, now, here comes the question. Yes. Because I got somebody out there watching right now, and I'm sure it's going to come up in a few seconds. Too good to be true. You say what? No, this is business. This is, this, listen, we're, we're trying to make our money, and, and we make our money by having you come, uh, come join Citizens Choice Energy, pay your bill, and, and after X amount of, of time, you, as you being a customer, we make back that money. Um, but it's, it's not. Utilities are, are actually ma making money as well. They're, they're in business to make money. Right. And they have these, you know, all, these, all the trucks and the employees and, and, and all that infrastructure that they have to support. We have to break down and find out because, you know, somebody's saying, listen, this, is, this sounds too good to be true. I, might, I, you know, I, I don't know if I really want to do this here. But for somebody who wants to be able to do this, it's really not a hard choice. No, it's not. It's pretty much uh, they could actually uh, call us at one eight six six or a toll-free number, mm -hmm. and um, pretty much re uh, register with us. And when they do see our agent come to the door, they could hope, uh, let us in with an open arm, and we could sign them up. All right. Okay. Well, before we leave, uh, you also do some double duty as well. I understand you're a city councilman out there oh, in New Jersey. I'm active in, uh, in politics, yes. Yeah, how's that going for you? Uh, it's it's politics. It's politics. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, Although I'm following the the national politics now. You know, I like uh, Santorum sweaters. You do, I'm yeah. a big fan of his sweaters. Really? Yeah. You could become president with those sweaters. Those sweaters are very impressive. That, those are called the presidential sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming and sharing with us. Thank you and very much we'll, for having us. And we'll continue to let people know about Citizens Choice Energy. We really appreciate Yankee it. Yankee fans and Red Sox fans. Yankee fans. Oh, we can bring you back. Then. All right. No problem. Thanks all a right. lot. All right. Well, we encourage you don't go anywhere. Guess what? We are going to take you out into the open right after this break. Uh, we'll see you in a few seconds. Be right back. tell which of these children was not born free? Can you tell which of these children was not born equal? Can you tell which of these children does not deserve to be treated with dignity? Human right number one, we are all born free and equal. What are human rights? Find out at youthforhumanrights.org.
Hundreds of park advocates, employees, volunteers, and elected officials gather together to network and discover what the community is doing to improve green spaces in the Bronx. Our Bronx Net correspondent, Sylvia Anglin, has a story, and she brings us this report. Although they're just setting up, the theme for Speak Up 2012 is green spaces for all generations. The Bronx is going green and the 18th annual Bronx Park Speak Up brought together park advocates, employees, elected officials and volunteer groups to learn how to improve Bronx green spaces. Held at Lehman, this green conference was sponsored by Con Ed and it offered the community an opportunity to see what's going on as far as green spaces. So what exactly are Bronx green spaces? There are a lot of different elements, but I think the overall would be the purpose of the garden. So who's going to use it, whether it's seniors who may have accessibility issues, children who are going to need some space to run around and not need, you know, not trample the plants. Um, so just deciding what the garden will be used for and who will use it is really the biggest first step in designing. We focus on getting kids that live in an urban area, that live with buildings and cars and concrete, and we get them someplace green, someplace where there's soil under their feet and trees over their head. So for me personally, when I bring groups into the park, that's how I define green space. And these kids from Eco Riders demonstrate how they help the environment and go green using skateboards. The skateboards themselves are an incentive and a reward for the kids to come to the program. And as long as I that, skateboards themselves are extremely environmentally friendly because one, they run on fat and they have nothing but sweat and a lot of heavy breathing. They are a great way to, they're a great way to exercise because it doesn't seem like exercise. Understanding that the key to green spaces are the youth, there were more than a handful of youth-based organizations representing for going green. The beautiful thing about Build On is that we kind of try to spread ourselves out as many as we can. Some program coordinators manage uh, multiple schools trying to activate students into community service. It feels like, you know, good that, you know, we're paying back, you know, we're giving um, something back, you know, to the you know, people who are struggling, you know, with social and physical issues. The event in its 18th year allowed for an even exchange of ideas on the little things that we can do to bring about change and truly go green. We focus on free programming within the natural areas of the park. So like high school internships after school, middle school internships after school, free school programs for classes that are interested to learn about the lake, about the forest, about the natural areas of the park. The youth of the Bronx with the help of organizations like Green Up, Build On and the Point Eco Riders are working to connect yesterday with today to build tomorrow. For BronxNet, this is Sylvia Anklin. And thank you, Sylvia. Well, bus delays and overcrowding trains has the Soundview Morrisania community calling for improvements from the MTA. Ar Arlene Makoko was at a town hall meeting where elected leaders and community groups heard from residents on the changes they like to see. If you have plans to take the 36 bus anytime soon, the wait may be longer than usual. And when it comes, here's what James Graham had to say about conditions. Overcrowding, especially around 3 o'clock. And the number four is worse because you only got two buses going back and forth. And he's not alone. We understand that, 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 that there are going to be times when the buses are going to be crowded. But what we're talking about is consistently crowded to the point where no one can get on. And that is a problem, says State Assemblyman Marcos Crespo, who helped to organize a Bronx Transit town hall meeting. He brought together transportation alternatives, the Bronx River community, along with his colleagues in government to hear firsthand from residents. Our folks are, are not getting enough service and not getting the right amount of buses for their lines. And uh, we've seen some things that are going right. We have improvements to the six train. We've seen some of the development on some of the stations, but we have a lot of work to do. Much of the focus was on the 20 27, 41, and 36 lines with several people like Edward Felder coming up with suggestions to help the MTA. You got school kids and grown-ups going to work and it's not enough buses to 36 bus picking up everybody. They come like every hour on an hour. You know, they should have a bus pick up the kids 
and then pick up the working working class people. State Assemblywoman Vanessa Gibson, who represents Highbridge and Morrisania, successfully fought to save a bus line in her community, but adds that more needs to be done. Many of our residents are very dissatisfied with service. Long um, lines waiting on the bus and train, crowded trains, crowded buses, and it's very disheartening because they have no choice. We're here tonight because we think this is a special neighborhood. Paul Steely White from Transportation Alternatives launched a ride rebellion campaign citywide to restore transportation where services have been cut back. He says he's encouraged by the show of support for improvements. It's a special part of the city because we have elected officials who are prioritizing transit, who care about transit, champions for transit, and we're also very lucky to have some very strong community partners. So the question is, is there great news ahead for the riders on the 27, 41, and 36 line? Well, the experts here tonight seem to think so. They say now that the governor is aware that a problem exists, change is inevitable. For BronxNet, this is Arlene Makoko. And we want to thank Arlene for her report. And uh, that's about all the time we have for this particular episode of Open. Definitely been a pleasure coming into your homes. We want to thank all of our guests for joining us, and especially you, the viewer, for tuning in. Now, you can tune in for tonight for the re cast of Open, 10 p.m. on Channel 67. If you're one of those who are watching on Verizon Files, you know you can get us on Channel 33. And if you desire a brand new, fresh episode of Open Friday, 10 a.m., my girl, Rena Valentine will be here. So we encourage you to check her out. And until then, keep your heart, your mind, and most of all, this channel wide open. Darren Jaime saying, see you later. can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone. But you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org. We've got your back.